Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Juliana and in today's video we are going to talk about a science fiction book this is by Philip K. Dick and I'm talking about the three stigmata of Palmer Eldridge Jesus I bought this book for a joint reading but I ended up not joining the joint reading I'm going to talk about a little bit about the plot and then I'm going to give you my perception of the book and, you know, my thoughts. So we began this book with a man waking up one morning and he wakes up beside a girl and he sees she has white hair but he doesn't know who she is or where he is why he is there so he's a bit foggy he just knows that he works in an office in new york he picks up a suitcase that we find out that he is the suitcase is his drink that is called dr smile so we have shrinks in a suitcase i suppose this is a digital shrink it's not linked to a human per se and he asks this suitcase what happened last night or the night before and this man is called Barney Meyerson so the woman wakes up we get to know her name Rondinella Fugat or just Ronnie and according to Dr. Smile she is Barney's assistant we get to understand that she worked for miniatures pp or miniatures per perky pet in china so this miniatures perky pet or miniatures pp is the company for whom barney's work works we get to understand that he is a precognitive fashion con consultant so precognitive in a way that he predicts the things that's going to happen in the future and fashion consultant because people go to him to find out if their collection or of clothes or their collection of anything at all will get successful in sales or it can be miniaturized by the company so we get to that a bit later so Ronnie worked as I was saying for miniatures PP in China but there she got wrong many predictions and was sent to New York to learn a bit with Barney. Barney, according to Dr. Smile, predict, predicted that he would get along with her, so that's why they slept together in the first day that she was there. We also get to know Mr. Leo Bolero, that he's the boss of Barney, so he's at the head of the company Miniatures PP. Uh, so according to Ronnie, uh, Barney was summoned by the military to serve in the colonies in Mars. So that's why he goes around with uh, without their smile in his suitcase, because he's trying to deflect uh, that 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 what that mission that he was summoned for he doesn't want to leave earth or lose his, his job because probably if he goes to mars ronnie would get his position during the reading we get to understand that the earth was is facing consequences of climate climate change so the temperatures are very high uh, no one can get can go around in the surface in the surface of earth for too long because the sun is burning the oceans are evaporating and there's only heat and humidity so they have like underground uh, buildings in the surface they circulate very fast and they can't be in the surface for too long then we get to know a new character that is called Richard Hunt in New Jersey. 
he's an, in a relationship with Emily and Emily is an artist, is an artist. Uh, she makes ceramics and paints ceramics and Richard is trying to sell her new collection and he's trying to sell her new collection to Miniatures PP so he has an appointment with Barney Barney Meyerson at 9 o'clock but the predic predicament here is that Emily is Barney's ex-wife and so Richard is a bit nervous because he thinks that he's going to say that her collection uh, is not going to be su successful so uh, he's going to show that miniatures PP don't have any interest in buying the new collection of Emily and that is what happens um, at the end. Barney and Emily had children, they had two children, but they aren't really mentioned in the book. They don't appear, they don't talk, they don't... It's like they are in the background and we never get to see them. Uh, and he said that it was, it was him, was him who asked for the divorce uh, and he used to live with her in a building that was numbered 33 and supposedly um, they weren't the it were it wasn't allowed to um, to have their children and so they were expelled or something and after that he asked Emily for the divorce and he left the house and it gets in the underlines that he, he left them, so he abandoned them. So we are talking about a period in time in the future. I'm not sure exactly what year we are talking about, if Philip K. Dick predict, predicted or uh, situated the story like in the years we are living now or further in the future but for this story we have interplanetary voyages we have a colony in Mars there's a system called Pro Proxima or Proxima or how I don't know how well to pronounce it I suppose it's Proxima um, where there exists humanoids or <sighs> extraterrestrial beings that uh, mask themselves to look like humans, something like that. During, during the reading of this story, you also get to, or you get to see Philip K. Dick talk about religion and he like if he creates a new religion they call them neo-christians um, and we get to know a bit more what they are all about further in the story but i'm not going to dwell on it because that is part a bit of the end of the story so then there's um, an announcement on earth that a, a man called palmer eldridge um, was on a ship that got wrecked or crushed in Pluton and he was taken by Ono to an hospital but they don't divulge where he is but we get to know that he is an interplanetary industrial that lived to Proxima system 10 years ago because he was invited by the Council of Proxima Humanoids to modernize the automatic factories according to human concept and people never heard from him again. But now there's this news and people are curious about what, what happened and why he returned to solar system and one person in particular is very interested in what is happening and that is Leo Bolero 
so the boss of Barney, because he has illegal businesses in Mars regarding a drug called candy. Um, and he pays an annual tribute to Ono, like in a, in a payment so they close their eyes to his business. Although when he's asked about it, he denies that he has anything to do with it. So candy is a drug produced in the plantations of Venus and is chewed so they had to shoot the, the paste, like a paste, and it produces an illusion where the person gets real sensations of being in another reality. Uh, it can be from the past of that person, it, it can be in a different type of context. And one thing that turns this drug unique is that people can go to the same illusion together but for that they need miniatures of things miniatures of themselves miniatures of objects and i is never i never get to really understand how this worked but who produces the miniatures his miniatures pp but I don't really got to understand how Bolero got to have his company to produce miniatures that supposedly was used to uh, consume a drug that was illegal. Um, so his precognitive pre um, um, employees supposedly were also giving advice to clients that weren't really producing miniatures. So that's why how I see how this could be done at the same time. But the company was called Miniatures PP, so that was a little... He gave the name of what he was really producing to the company, you know? So I don't know how well that really didn't get caught. I don't know. If you have an answer or if you have another interpretation of, or if you could help me understand, understand a bit better this part of the story, if you have read the book, please let me know in the comments. Bolero goes to talk with Hepburn Gilbert, that is an ONO secretary, and he tries to get his attention to the lichens that Eldridge bought from Proxima. So Bolero is worried because he thinks that Palmer Eldridge is bringing something new to the solar system and something new meaning a new drug. And so he is threatened by that because he, he will have a direct rival in business. Bolero asks Ronnie to predict where Palmer Eldridge is hospitalized and in which name he is hospitalized as. Because he's trying to get to him to get up front of what is going on, what, uh, what is his intentions. And he gets to know the name and he goes there, but I don't think he don't get to talk to him at that point. Meanwhile, Richard Hunt, so the husband, I think he, he's already husband of Emily, the ex-wife of Barney, is approached by Il e. Schultz to buy Emily's ceramics. And this man says he's from a Boston company, Shoe Z. In the solar system, the currency is shark skin. I don't know if in the English edition is translated like that, but if I do a direct translation from the Portuguese edition, that's how it, it translates. So I'm not sure if this is the right translation but you know something similar of that so richard signs a contract and gets paid and so he has his 
compromise with Emily accomplished. Uh, later, Bolero uses Barney to get to Eldridge and Barney predicts that Eldridge will get an agreement with Ono to commercialize Shio Z and ban Candy, saying that Candy provokes habituation. And Bolero goes to Eldridge uh, residency in the moon and gets trapped talking to an intercom. And Eldritch says to Bolero that Proxima wants to invade Earth and he gives Bolero shoes E and Bolero is transported to an endless lawn where there's only him and a little girl, a little girl with about 8 years old. And Eldritch has this slogan for his new drug, shoes E. So E. Schultz and Eldritch are connected. So they, they have business together and they are commercializing Shuzi. And Eldritch says that God pro promises eternal life, but he can give it. With a Shuzi, someone can be everything. An ink set, a rock, another person. So he's a bit uh, different from Candy. And he says that um, after the uses, someone uses Shuzi, they don't get the they don't get the turper of like candy can give. So with the Shuzi, you can get on it very fast. As Epburn Gilbert, the Ono secretary, is a Buddhist, he is inclined to approve Shuzi because of his beliefs in reincarnation. And Bolero is in bed, in a bad spot uh, because he's seeing all this happening. But when he's in the moon and Eldritch gives him Shuzi, he gets a bit of an experience that is not pleasant. Um, and we there get to understand what the Shuzi really, what is the effects of Shuzi. And we get to understand that Palmer Eldridge is like everywhere with Shuzi. So he can get into your illusion, your dream. Uh, and manipulate what is happening so the illusion is not just for you or not only your own Palmer Eldritch gets to tap on it and Polero seeing and feeling exactly what happens with UZ understands that he has to be the savior of Earth and stop this Palmer Eldridge from, from um, commercialize this new drug and control everyone. Uh, many things more happen after this. I'm not going to tell you more. I think this is enough for captivating your curiosity. Fun the funny thing uh, is that I was expecting an ending more more spectacular perhaps because with another book that i read from philip k dick uh, the ending is always so unexpected and so unpredictable and i thought this one was very peaceful in a way <laughs> maybe it's, peaceful is not a word that i'm looking for but um very not slow how can i explain it then was perhaps so something um, between bolero and barney happens and uh, barney has to go to someone else to somewhere else um and the stigmatas of palmer eldridge are things that repeat themselves in the illusions we choose and sometimes well because Valero was caught 
by Palmer Eldridge and was injected. Injected? I don't know if he was injected, but um, he was forced to use Shuzi. We get to the end of the story and we, at least I, um, didn't really figure out if he was out of the illusion or if he was still in it. So, and the Tristigmata is um, has to do with um, three things that um, supposedly happened to Palmer Eldridge in terms of his physical appearance that repeat themselves and appear many times uh, when Bolero or Barney are under Shuzi. And of course, as you know, there's the three stigmata of Jesus. Um, and there's here a um, parallel with religion. Well, religion, we are talking about Christian belief. And there's a talk about how perhaps Barney found um, the origins of God or God himself. But that's a bit overlapped because um, we are talking about drugs. Some differences between Candy and Shuzi is that Candy only uh, is durable for one hour and Shuzi can be an eternity. So you can be there for 50 years, 5 million years, whatever. And so that's why Palmer says, or Palmer Eldridge says that he can give eternity. And supposedly the duration of that time um, is an infamous minute or half an hour or whatever in Earth, in Earth or wherever you are. Uh, and so the time doesn't pass for you in real, in reality, as it passes when you are under Shuzi. There is an interesting relation between the use of the drugs and religion, but you have to read it to figure out what it is. So I, I enjoyed this reading. I gave it four stars. It wasn't a five star as usually is with Philip K. Dick, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I have to say that I, in the middle, I was very gripped to the, sto to the story. Um, you want to figure out what the hell is going on, how this is going to end. And I got it excited with reading, so I had to pick it up. And if you have another interpretation or, um, yeah, another interpretation of the story, uh, another uh, commentary that you want to share with me and with others as well, please leave it in the comments. And, well, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And I see you on the next one. Bye!